I've noticed a lot of these tubes appearing lately in residential streets, public spaces and along the roadside. They usually appear in threes on lamp posts and they sit in plastic support brackets, cable tied in place. The tubes themselves look to be acrylic with no bottom and a small cap at the top. There are many empty brackets all over the place where some of the tubes are missing. Some of them have labels on. Now I've noticed them, I'm seeing literally hundreds of them across the Manchester area, but what are they? Why are they there? And what do they do? Like many areas across the country, Greater Manchester has high levels of air pollution on some local roads. With this in mind, there are clear patterns where you might spot these tubes. They tend to appear on a road that's prone to standing or slow moving traffic. The investment-led Greater Manchester Clean Air Plan aims to reduce air pollution on local roads through a multi-million pound investment in cleaner buses, taxis and targeted traffic measures. The government has approved the plan with no clean air zone and no charges to drive on local roads. This means we won't be utilising the ULES cameras that went up all over the place a couple of years ago and have never been used. Greater Manchester is under direction from the government to meet legal limits for nitrogen dioxide on local roads in the shortest possible time and by 2026 at the latest. The Clean Air Plan will allow the city region to meet legal limits for nitrogen dioxide on local roads in the shortest possible time without the need for a clean air zone. Nitrogen dioxide is one of the main things these tubes and a series of monitoring stations around the area are used to measure. Nitrogen dioxide or NO2 is a gas which is a major pollutant in towns and cities and is the main type of air pollution being tackled by the Greater Manchester Clean Air proposals. It's caused by burning fossil fuels in diesel and petrol engines, power stations, industry, cooking and heating. There are hundreds of these air quality monitoring diffusion tubes across Greater Manchester and they're used to monitor the amount of harmful NO2 in the air. Diffusion tubes are small plastic tubes with a cap at each end, one of which is coloured. Under the coloured cap is a steel mesh disc which is coated with triethanolamine or TEA, a chemical that absorbs nitrogen dioxide. When gases pass over this mesh, the chemical changes. This chemical change tells us how much nitrogen dioxide was in the air during the monitoring period. Tubes are attached in a vertical position with the coloured cap at the top to a stationary object such as a lamp post, road sign, railings or a drain pipe. The bottom cap is removed so that the air can get into the tube. NO2 in the air reacts with the chemical on the mesh at the top of the tube and changes into nitrite. The tube has to be left in place with the bottom cap off for 2-4 to four weeks, after which time the bottom cap is replaced and the tube is sent to a laboratory for analysis. In the lab, the steel mesh is removed and washed with distilled water, which is then analysed. The concentration of nitrogen dioxide is found by shining an ultraviolet light through the water sample. The amount of light absorbed is equivalent to the concentration of nitrogen dioxide that was present in the air during the monitoring period. The tubes are reasonably accurate, fairly cheap, easy to use and can be deployed pretty much anywhere. Often, a series of tubes is mounted in exactly the same place for consecutive months of the year to enable longer term comparisons of pollution levels. They are however much less accurate than the highly sensitive automated monitoring equipment used in the roadside pollution monitoring cabins we'll look at soon. Diffusion tubes take samples over an approximate one month period and are used in the Greater Manchester Clean Air Plan to collect and analyse two different sets of data. As part of the clean air plan, nitrogen dioxide levels are measured against the long-term annual mean legal limit of 40 micrograms per cubic metre. For clean air monitoring purposes, government criteria states that measurements at diffusion tube concentrations of 40.4 micrograms per cubic metre and below are rounded down to 40 micrograms per cubic metre and are within the annual mean legal limit. As part of the local air quality management, monitoring takes place in areas where there's relevant public exposure to pollution and includes locations such as homes, schools, hospitals and care homes. For local air quality management purposes, government criteria states that measurements at diffusion tube concentrations of 40 micrograms per cubic metre and over are above the annual mean legal limit. So basically, different locations monitor pollution for two different schemes, the clean air plan and local air quality management. The data and location for 2023 is available on the Clean Air GM website. 
Nitrogen dioxide levels are measured against both the long-term annual mean legal limit of 40 micrograms per cubic metre and a short-term hourly legal limit of 200 micrograms per cubic metre. Exposure to nitrogen dioxide has a cumulative impact over time and may contribute to chronic health conditions similar to smoking. Diffusion tube data is used to assess levels of NO2 in the air in Greater Manchester and for scientific modelling to predict future levels of NO2. In 2023, nitrogen dioxide air quality monitoring for the purposes of the Greater Manchester Clean Air Plan was carried out at 248 locations, down from 432 in 2022, with 64 sites of exceedance. A further 78 locations were considered to be at risk of exceedance. There was a reduction in the number of sites from 2022 as some had to be moved or decommissioned. These included sites where monitored concentrations had shown a low risk of exceeding the legal limit or where vandalism meant that annual mean concentrations could not be calculated. While the tubes are believed to be reasonably accurate, studies have indicated that nitrogen dioxide diffusion tube samplers may overestimate concentrations by up to 30%, whereas others have shown an underestimation. This is monitoring station STK7, which was brought online on April 1st, 2016. It's in Cheadle and provides hourly data on nitrogen dioxide and particulate matter, PM10, and where available smaller PM2.5 particle levels in the air. This short-term data is collected for the purpose of the local air quality management area and not the Greater Manchester Clean Air Plan. This monitoring station is STK5, which opened on April 12, 2005, and is on the A6 near Stepping Hill Hospital. It provides the same data for the local air quality management area. The online dashboard for all of these stations displays the Daily Air Quality Index, or DAQI, which is numbered 1 to 10 and divided into 4 bands, with 1 being low and 10 being very high, to indicate immediate short-term air pollution levels in a simple way, similar to the Sun Index or Pollen Index. While these are not linked to legal limits, it can help to show whether you're likely to be at risk from air pollution on a particular day. These stations also measure other pollution levels. Particulate matter is a mixture of solids and liquids suspended in the air. It varies in size, with some particles such as dust, smoke and soot large enough to be seen by the eye. The most dangerous to health are PM10 and PM2.5 fine particles, both smaller than the width of a human hair. Normally PM10 and PM2.5 are too small to see, but on days with very high pollution levels they can mix with other pollution and appear as smog or haze. The main sources of particulate pollution are domestic wood and coal fires and stoves, vehicle exhaust fumes, brake and tyre dust, and industry and construction. They also measure sulphur dioxide, which is a colourless gas with a strong smell. The main source of sulphur dioxide pollution in the UK is power stations burning fossil fuels such as coal and heavy oils. Petrol refineries, vehicle engines, and home coal fires and stoves also produce this pollutant. And finally, they measure ozone. Good ozone in the stratosphere shields us from the sun's UV rays, but at ground level, ozone is a harmful pollutant and one of the main ingredients of smog. It's created when pollutants from cars and industrial combustion, like power stations, chemical plants and factories, react chemically in the presence of sunlight. This means that unhealthy levels are more likely to happen on hot sunny days. Ozone can be carried a long way by the wind, so can affect rural areas as well as urban areas. So that's what those clear plastic tubes you've probably seen on your travels are. They're diffusion tubes and they're mainly used to measure nitrogen dioxide.